Thank you. So, I should start this thing up? Nah. I think I'll start with you guys. How many of you have ever been on Tinder? Okay, quite a lot of you. Not too surprising, yeah, because after all, Tinder is one of the largest dating apps in the world. Even in Finland, approximately one million people have used it. Think about it. One-fifth of the country has been on this app. Probably not a surprise anymore, but I'm one of these people. So, um, do you guys want to see my Tinder profile? Yes! Come on, I'm not that easy. Yeah. Oh! Not the big screen debut I always expected for myself. Uh, in my description, I have this desperate list of my likes and my interests, and then I have my height and my postcode, probably my best features, and the flags <laughs> represent the languages I supposedly speak. I don't know why I put Swedish over there. I would never attempt Swedish with somebody I actually wanted to impress. But some of you are probably saying, so Arto, why on earth do you have a dating profile that looks like a job application? Yes, that is a very good point. Thank you for that, Dad. Uh, I've changed it because I thought this would be the best way to get responses. Tinder for me has been a road of self-discovery with more sadness than happiness in it. Still, it did teach me one very important thing about happiness. I got into Tinder thanks to some peer pressure. My friends were saying stuff like, ah, oh, just, you know, check out who's over there. It's like, hey, you'll see who likes you for what you look like. Just go have a drink with somebody. You don't need to commit. All of these things have one thing in common. They're all shortcuts to happiness. They don't require a lot of effort, but they can feel very rewarding when they work out. They're all some kinds of instant gratification. And Tinder knows that they are in the instant gratification game. When you first get started with Tinder, it picks up your data from Facebook really fast, it suggests a couple of photos of you, and then tells you how to fill in the rest of it. And it keeps on escalating from there as well. When I loaded it up, I got the first profile. There was the obscure photo of some woman, and she hadn't even written a description for herself. Like, um, I know it's another person behind there, but I had to reject her, I had nothing to build on. And then the second profile already pops up. It's like, you know, if the thing just keeps going and it just escalates from there, you start going, yes, yes, left, right, no, yeah, yeah, come on, give me all these beautiful people. And my first match, somebody liked me back. And I got to tell you, it feels really good. It's like I was just staring at my phone, but doing backflips in my head saying, hooray, I'm dateable. So did I start a conversation with this person? No, I just wanted more matches right now. This had just turned into a game. And as far as I could tell, I was winning at it. And Tinder knows that they're all about the game as well, which is why the profiles keep coming as fast as they do. They want you to stay in the main feed and look at the ads, not go off and fall in love somewhere. But like all games, the thrill does die down, and eventually I did try to start conversations as well. Not as much fun as just looking at the people. Most people were not up for meeting up and not even to have a conversation. So here I am. I thought this was the end of my experiment. I feel a bit more lower. I'm ready to give up dating altogether. But then it happened. She didn't seem special at first, and our conversation was off to a rocky start. But for some reason, we clicked on a level I didn't think was possible. I knew I had just met my soulmate. And the best thing was, she said she felt the same way about me. It's like, I knew now that there was somebody like the one for everybody. Love songs opened up to me for the first time. My Spotify playlist looked disgusting at the time. We shared everything about ourselves to each other, and we only seemed to grow closer every day. It felt too good to be true. Because it was. We lived miles apart, and eventually, misunderstandings turned into arguments, and that great feeling turned to pure anxiety. We did have one serious conversation, and the reason became clear. Both of us had been alone for quite a while, and we only saw in each other what we actually wanted to see. We recognized this, and we broke it off, not having met once. So, so, a relationship doesn't happen overnight. It needs to be built over a long period of time. And Tinder does promise you this eventual happiness, but it's silly to think that Tinder will actually do all the work for you. Still, Tinder did teach me one valuable thing. Because this image of her made me very happy, got my happiness from within, it was me who made myself happy. It was not Tinder, not necessarily her. And being able to feel these strong emotions Never having done that before, I knew that they were available to me all of a sudden. All I had to do was be a bit vulnerable. And Tinder definitely doesn't help you out with that. Who here has felt sad because of social media at some point? I used to think so too. 
until I realized it was me who makes me sad, like I make myself happy. I've been talking about Tinder, but this applies to all social media. It offers us instant gratification and some experiences that you might not have otherwise. But social media did not invent instant gratification. That has been around forever. It's just more available to us nowadays. So, what do we have to do? We need to be more ready to recognize it, check it when it dominates us, and be ready to face the ugly side of life more willingly. As the Finnish saying goes, kohti uusia pettymyksiä, forward, onto new disappointments. Think about that the next time you think social media is making you unhappy. Thank you. <laughs>